Hey guys, so I just wanted to briefly apologise for the lack of mine, and Vicky's lovely, pretty faces on this episode. Basically, the footage was in a lower resolution, so it meant that our faces were very jumpy, and it would have ended up, if you were watching on YouTube, just, it would have ended up really pissing you off. So, we've taken that out, we've put in the background, so if you're listening on iTunes, you're still good, all the audio is fine. Um, and I've just got a little bit of an outro as well because we lost connection at the end. So a bit of an eventful episode. But hope you enjoy, guys. And thanks again for tuning in. Here we go. Hey, guys. And welcome back to the Natty Scene. Um, your insight into natural bodybuilding with AJ Morris. And, of course, the usual uh, the usual guest, Vicky. Or the tiny titan. Um, so yeah, super excited to bring you guys another episode. It's very early morning over here in the in the UK. If you're an American listener or a, a, a sort of um, a foreign listener that we've had, I know that we have a few of them. Um, but yeah, very early morning for me and Vicky, cracking on with the update on a Friday morning. Um, I hope you guys are all well and hope you managed to catch our most recent episode, which was obviously a day out from... From my show and I'm still slightly muddy in appearance um, from the tan that's left on that I can't seem to get off and then Vicky's obviously she was there uh, so I imagine that Vicky's had a, a busy week catching up on on things that she potentially missed out over the weekend in terms of clients and things like that I know that we both had probably quite a manic week um, yeah. I, I for sure have so let's get into things I think first that's um Let's, let's briefly cover what your week has been like, and then obviously we'll go on to um, what what happened at my show and what I think of the results, and of course uh, the exciting things that are to come. So, so for yourself, Vicky, how did you, how did you enjoy the show? Um, did you get to see the female classes? What did you think? Um, and obviously, what did you think of my performance on the day? <laughs> well, you were crap, obviously, because, you know, otherwise we wouldn't be here now. Um, <laughs> obviously. Now, in all seriousness, it was good. It was such a good experience to obviously share that um, with you. Everybody knows that me and AJ have got a very, very close bond and a really good relationship. Um, and it was awesome to be able to kind of support him through everything with that. Um, I'm still that muddy brown colour, not because I was tanned, but, you know, because I got jealous of AJ's tan, so I decided to slap some on myself anyway, um, and now I can't get it off, so <laughs> I'm blaming him for that. Um, also, I wanted to kind of pretend that I was competing as well, so, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, anyway, it's all good. So, um, the show was absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? So expertly run, it ran to time. There's a little bit run over. I know that people were waiting around a little bit later, but it was more than understandable. Yeah. Um, and when I say a little bit later, it was nothing like UK BFF waiting around later, oh, you know, no. where it's like two hours overrun. Yeah. It was te- it was te- it was ten p.m. I think we came off stage for the overall. Yeah, so um, it's actually really nice finishing time, considering how many athletes were on that stage that day. Yeah, and it only started at eleven so exactly yeah so it was really good and the stage was it was beautiful actually the way that the stage was messed up Mm, it was a really nice it was just a really nice stage to just kind of look at you know you you can go to some bodybuilding shows and and they're really plain and boring and then you, you know you're just kind of standing around and you know there's nothing on the stage to kind of engage the audience yeah um, but it was actually a really good experience. So if anybody does have the chance to go to one of the UK DFBA shows, then definitely go and have one because it's it's quite a good experience to go. So that weekend, it was it was quite an emotional weekend because I've seen AJ go through highs and lows in his prep, but always with um, a smile on his face. And going through that final pump workout with him the um, the night before and taking his pictures the morning of, and, you know, just making sure that I gave him a couple of posing tips, like tensing that ass from behind because it's it's good from every angle. So even if um, judges can't see it, you might as well get the glutes striations in, right? <laughs> but it was good. So if you guys haven't seen the pump session workout that we videoed, go and have a look at that. That's available on YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, in regards to the classes, the class is high standard. Really, really yeah. high stats throughout as well. You know, there wasn't like one class where I was thinking, okay, you know, I've seen better across the federation. Every single class was a really high standard. Oh yeah, um, yeah. 
Unfortunately, I didn't see very many women's classes apart from when I went back over and spoke to some of the girls who did compete in them, um, like Danny Teresa, who's mm -hmm. competing in the class that I would be competing in. Um, and she won her class and she looked phenomenal this year. Well, now, was she, she, was she the girl that did BMBF as well or not? Yeah, she did BMBF Athletic with me in 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, and, yeah, she, she just wasn't... She doesn't quite fit into athletic because she's more physique. Right. So she's um, more muscular, is that? Absolutely, okay. yeah. yeah. But she holds it really nicely. She's got really nice balance. Um, okay. And she does look like a true physique slash bodybuilder. Okay. So um, she did the women's bodybuilding um, class and it was really, really good. And it was a competitive class as well. So I did enjoy those. The bikini class, again, for naturals, um, I'm not big on bikini classes in natural federations, but even the standard of those were like, Jesus Christ, you know, they yeah. were tight. Yeah, they were. Like, for re and really, like, lovely-looking physiques as well. Um, Indeed, not, yeah. Not just in terms of, like, oh, there's, a like, an aesthetically pleasing girl. In terms of, like, I I've always thought of the bikini class, like, it's very hard to judge. Because mm. from a muscularity point of view, there's not vast differences, but there actually was vast differences in the muscularity on the on the ones that I saw over the weekend. Like you could tell why the winner won. Like she oh had, yeah, she had really shapely glutes, like awesome delts, really tight waist, and yeah, it just looked like a it looked like a to very like a toned down version of like a really good figure athlete so like her with more muscle she'd probably come out of that category and be a figure athlete because of her shape and definitely. i like i like that sort of shape and structure especially in the female classes it looks cool definitely so that was really nice actually to see that there was a bit of a difference from bikini because you see the bikini in like the the non-tested federations and you're like okay i can see why they're tight and i can see how um how they hold that muscle and they still have that softer look and things yeah. like that but um, but these girls, they were all beautiful and they had rid ridiculous grace on stage. I mean, this is why I could never be a bikini athlete. Jesus Christ, I fall over, you know, the floor. Um, so I could not do that. Um, but yeah, but the, the standard of the classes were absolutely phenomenal. And I just want to give a shout out to Lee Kemp because he ran that so superbly um, and couldn't have done it better. So well done for that one, guys. Mm. Um, so yeah, so your performance on the day, um, of course... With all of my expert help throughout this time, you were <laughs> phenomenal. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. Um, but no, your your performance on the day, AJ, you came out, you were confident. You know that you were owning that stage that day. And it was all down to your condition that you won that. And you worked so goddamn hard for it. And that was the reason why it came out. Now, if, if any of you guys haven't seen the class that came out, one, it was a massive class. And two, AJ was second on stage. And then when his, and the, we, they brought you out in like blocks of five, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were in the first block and we were like, okay, yeah, you've got the best condition in that block. No worries. I'm very confident. I'm very confident. He went off to the side. Then the second block came out and some bloody monsters came out. Yeah. And like, I started to get butterflies in my stomach. I was like, oh, shit. You know, if they go for size, then, you know, AJ, obviously, you're a small guy in mm. comparison. You're not small in general, but you're small in comparison. But that's yeah. the reason why your condition takes over. Yeah. And then the third block came out and there was even a bigger guy that came no. out. And it was like, oh, holy shit. So honestly, throughout the entire judging of your class, my heart was in my throat so much. Mm. Um, but your routine came and it was absolutely gold standard. And then you got first call out, which I was like, you know, jumping up and down on the seat, which Scott had to tell me to stop doing because I was shaking his camera. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, everything happened like that. His routine was absolutely perfect. His poise was brilliant. One good tip that I can give anybody who's staying on stage, when you are stood to the side and you are waiting for other comparisons to be done, never, ever, ever lose your relaxed front pose. You always need to be on point because you are always being judged. I hold, now, there were I hold it in a, more, in, a, in a more feasible way to hold it. Um, yeah. So I hold like a half, half lat spread. 
Um, yeah. I find and I find that looks really professional. I Definitely. find if you, if you hold like a half front lap spread, half front relaxed, you look like you're holding composure at the back. Where in yeah. reality, you're actually off the gas a little bit because if you're there holding a front relaxed for ages, you you you're fucking knackered. Oh, so hold, absolutely. Holding a partial, it's that's a pro tip. That's it, definitely. And that's exactly what I do on stage as well. You know, it's just one hand on my hip, one leg poised, not flexed, but poised. And obviously your shoulders wide and your lats spread. So yes. like you said, just that half poised. But it does kind of separate you from the others. Does. Because there were others on stage who were just kind of, you know, shifting from one hip to the other. And, and it did look messy. Yeah. And it's it's just these little bits that kind of separate people. And that, again, is, like you said, a pro tip. It separates you from the rest and it separates the, the more elite of the bodybuilders around from the rest. So um, and then obviously you won. And then I lost my voice and cried and, mm. and captured the most superb image of you with that with that trophy, which. It was absolutely epic, and what a memory of the day. So really, really pleased that I could obviously hold your hand through that. Um, and then I attacked you before you went and had some food, <laughs> didn't I? And I actually grabbed Jack. I was like, ah, Jack, where's AJ? Yeah. I need to see you. And then attacked you before you went and got yourself an Ando. Not you, but the other guys. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that was the wrap-up of the weekend. And this week, I've just been flat-out busy. Um, I've taken on three new clients online, um, awesome. which was absolutely cool. So I've been busy setting them up, and they're all ready to smash some plans mm -hmm. starting um, on the proverbial Monday. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because they wanted to start on Monday. So it's like, okay, don't go out and have an epic cheat on Saturday, though, please. Mm -hmm. um, because I've already got your starting numbers. Um, so I've been setting them up. I've had my one-on-one -on -one clients as well. It's kids half term this week as well, so it's been hard oh, juggling that. Okay. Yeah, but I've still managed to get in all of my consistent training, um, managed to get some awesome new PBs actually, which is great. Okay. Um, food has gone up, which yeah. is lovely, so more food. However, you dropped weight, didn't you? Ah, oh, I dropped weight, yeah. Mm. I dropped weight over the weekend. So I was 106.2 on the Friday. Okay. Um, I actually had a quote unquote cheat meal on the Saturday and and um, well, it was an off-plan meal on the Saturday, but I had a cheap breakfast on the Sunday because okay. we were staying in the hotel. So I had like a proper epic breakfast. It was really good. Yeah, um, good. Mm -hmm. And then I weighed in on Monday when I got back home on my own scales and I dropped like two and a half pounds. Fuck no, I didn't eat enough. No, I was like, what the hell? Man? <laughs> and I even prepped all my own food and took it with me for the whole day. So, And if you think about it, it's weird because my neat levels were down on the Sunday because I was sat down all day at yeah. the show. Yeah. I didn't train on the Sunday. You probably so, had, like, nervous energy. Yeah, probably. It was yeah. all the adrenaline. My heart did was you, going so bad. Did you not train legs, though, on the Sunday? Oh, I did. Yeah, you yeah, did. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, was I went gonna to say, the you trained in the morning. Sunday. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah, I had an epic training session actually with Zach and the other <laughs> the, mem the other members of Team Zach. Yeah. Um, which was wicked actually. A video a video of that will be coming out where yeah. Rob Thurston, he's a men's physique pro. Was Beth there as well? Yeah, Beth was there too. Yeah, yeah. I um long like shout out to Beth if she listens. Um, but uh, long long time ago when I was literally first getting into bodybuilding, like. 2014 uh we both had a friend called ellis and she competed and beth was really good at good friends with ellis at the time um and that's where i first met beth we both went to her like pure, i think she, i think ellis did like a pure elite show and, okay. and we both went and i met beth there and like ever since we've been like sort of kind of in contact watching each other grow watching each other grow and now it's cool to see that we're obviously both in like she's doing personal training, online coaching, etc. And um, I know she's killing it now. She's now got way more confidence than she had in the past, and she's killing it, which is great. So it's awesome. She's nice. Yeah, and, she, she's, she's really nice, cute she? as well. I really like her actually. She works hard as well. Oh, you crazy know? physique. Yeah, crazy, just yeah, needs to grow. Crazy. Just needs to grow. It's like so many girls that have like this crazy foundation, but just need to grow. I think she is now with Zach, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, um, so yeah, so I did actually awesome. do that, but then weighed in on Monday, um, and went down to like 104.2, really strange. So lost, wow. lost two and a half pounds, food went up, food's gone up this week. Um, I've just done a check-in this morning, um, and I went up to 106 yesterday, okay. which was like, okay, awesome, weighed yes. in this morning, 104.8. <laughs> 
<laughs> and wow. it's like, what the hell? Yeah, don't get it, man. Don't get it. So, so basically, I'm still on maintenance calories, um, which is pretty awesome at being such amount, a huge amount of food. Are you feeling better? Um, honestly, honestly, like, do you feel any sort of like? Do you feel better at all, or do you still feel like fairly similar energy wise to prep? Oh God, no, 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 no! I've got sh- sh- crap loads more energy. Like yesterday in the gym, okay. um, just doing my one-on-one clients, they were drudging themselves in because it was dark and cold and everything. I was bouncing around like a kangaroo on acid. Okay. Cool. Um, so I had loads of energy, and I do have loads of energy. Um, but you see, I'm still consistent. I still wake up at five in the morning. I still do everything, even when I'm on a day off, like That's today. It. You know, consistency really does help, and I have um, got a consistent plan in the off season as well because I've got big plans for next year, which we'll go into at a later a later one. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it and consistency works, you know. And the nice. fact that I train really hard, I, I don't understand why people are using a quote unquote off season to basically pile on as much weight as you possibly can. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that I need to lose uh, lose weight. No, I don't. I know that I need to gain weight, and I know that I need to gain body fat, and it's not like I'm not trying. Yeah. It's just like, it's just for me, my metabolism is so ridiculous. My knee is high, yeah. um, and, you know, this consistent thing is, is obviously I just need more food. Yeah. And for people who go, oh, I'm a hard gainer, mm, you might not be a hard gainer, you might just not be eating enough and you've just got to push the boundaries a little bit more. But um, in the podcast that I did with Martin McDonald last week, you can't just shove a load of shit into your body and hope that that's all lean muscle tissue. Yeah. So, and that's the reason why I'm being a little bit more cautious of what I, what I do eat. All of my meals are consistent. All of my training is consistent. Um, and, you know, I'm going <laughs> to, you wait till next year. You wait till next year. But yeah. Um, but no, I am feeling a hell of a lot better in myself. I'm still hungry, which is, you know, odd on like two, seven fifty calories for somebody of my height and weight and all the rest of it as well. Yeah. Um, but I am, I'm hungry and I'm hungry like immediately after eating. So I've still, my hormone levels are obviously still a bit messed up by the sounds of it. Yeah. I think they take longer to recover, but the main thing is that, you know, your energy levels are coming up and, and that you're feeling like you can do your daily tasks without any issues Definitely. Um, because that's the main thing. Like that's 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 what i'm that's where i want to get my body to um, yeah and i i actually feel like i'm not that far away from that when i need to be so brilliant um it would just be a case of you know upping dietary fat for a short period of time and making sure that you know i start to feel everything regulating out and like after my big feed on sunday because i ate a lot on show day like i felt really good for a couple of days so it's a nice sign that i'm not too far away from mm. feeling pretty good still whilst being pretty fucking shredded. And I do think that's a large part down to the fact that I've been dieting for so long. Like my coping my my coping strategies and my mechanisms around like dealing not only with just sort of like the fatigue or the leth- lethargic feeling or or just like knowing what it's like to be in a routine which allows me to maximize and feel as good as I can whilst being lean. Yeah. Like, I think that's like, I think there's something to be said to doing an extremely long prep just to figure out how to cope with it. And then once you come out of that extensively long prep, you either have two options. You either, because it was a long prep, you're so emotionally, physically taxed that you fuck up your off season like so many people do, or you're so in tune with your body and you're so able to deal with everything that's going on in a uh, fatigue element, in a low body fat element, in a hormonal sort of uh, malaise uh, element of things, um, that you actually just transfer into your off season extremely easily. And I do think that I'm in the second position now. I think in, in previous years, I, I I had so many things rolling through my head as to what I wanted to do post-show in terms of what I wanted to eat or or, or how high I wanted to get my calories or anything. I really couldn't give a shite about yeah. that right now. If anything, I want to prove to my following 
when I go to the worlds and when I do the worlds and when I come when I sort of stay out in the US for a little bit because I will be doing because there's mm. like a week gap in between Boston and New York so what I'll be yeah. doing is I'll just be competing in Boston I'll stay out in the US until New York and then I'll do four nights in New York with my sister who will come across and Amazing. I, I just want to prove I want to use that time to prove to my social media um, following that you can do that and not be fucking stupid. Yeah. And actually, you know, you can still train. I'm very much looking forward to... The first thing I did when uh, Lee sent me across the email was find out what the best gym in Boston was. Uh, um, brilliant. And how, what the opening hours were. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm looking forward to trying out some, you know, some US gyms. I'm looking forward to sort of spending some time out there. And I, you know what would ruin my time out there is if I just got fat. So, yeah. you know. Which, I, I, guys, you can do in a week. Oh, you can easily. do. I could come back for Christmas looking like an absolute fucking whale. Yeah. Like, and that would just shit away my off season. There's no reason to do it. Like, mm. I'll say it here. I'll say it right now. I, I want to tu- turn pro in 2020. I, I want to battle for a pro card in 2020. That's, that's a two-year off season. Yeah. I. I don't want to skip a beat. I no. don't want to skip any. I don't want to skip any meal. I don't want to skip training sessions. Like that's what me and Vicky are like. We 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 want to maximize every single second. And, and 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 guys, you can still be a great bodybuilder without having that religious intensity with regards to every day nailing it. You could still be a great bodybuilder. I have no doubt. And I'm sure there's people out there that that aren't as religious as that and still compete. That's cool. But the difference is, is like me and Vicky don't like going to bed at night without realising that we've poured in everything into our days, whether it's business or like our own stuff. Um, You know, if we haven't delivered for our clients or we haven't delivered for ourselves, I don't think we'd sleep well at night. You agree? Yeah, no, absolutely, um, absolutely. And and this is this is just personally what we try and put across. Like you might listen to another podcast, which is more lifestyle based or has a bit of a toned down environment, where you'll mm. hear you can do this or you can do that. And when you're in off season, we just you know we relax and we you know we we come off the gas a little bit. That's cool, like fine. But essentially, what you're 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 you, you're listening to the people that. Yeah, they might have like a pro card. They may, they may well have a pro card, or they may well not. They may well just compete as a, like a very much a hobby. But me and Vicky, not like not being cocky or anything, but we're both champions um, in our own ways. Uh, we've both been champions in multiple years, and success leaves clues, guys. So a lot of what we do, ha- there's a reason fucking behind it. Um, so I think you know um, I think next episode will go into my plans a little bit more but I want to use this episode I want to use this episode to um, really get it across to you guys that if you are in this post show period like just think about maximising what you're doing Mm. and don't think of your season as something where you just come off the gas and you just you just completely relax because it's really not like that you know I made a a case study on my um um, on my Instagram the other day and just selected a few random people like Mark Claxton was one Jack Thorburn was another um, yeah. and then Dar- Darren Loxton replied as well with his prepped meals and saying like it's, it's me as well and I was like <laughs> yeah you know like it, it is and it, it, it success leaves clues and these guys that, that do so well are, are being super regimented and yeah. I I, I must admit that in the past, like, I haven't been as regimented as I could have been. Um, and, it, and it makes me feel like I can, if, if there's extra that I can tap into, I want to tap into it. Um, Definitely. So, like, going into your off-season with a, with a goal of consistency, with a goal of, you know, not, not getting fat and, and slowly working up your intake and, you know, adding those initial sort of, you know, four or five pounds fairly quickly, but then going steadily from there and taking your time. You know, if you've added... If you've added twenty pounds and your show was two weeks ago, you fucked it. 
You yeah, fucked completely. It. If you're thinking, and you are going to struggle to get your sensitivity back as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you're not to... just going to be able to eat a boatload of carbs, which everybody knows you need carbs for your condition, you need carbs for your muscle building, everything else. You are the most anabolic you are going to be walking off stage and if you just don't grab hold of that and work fucking hard and eat properly then you know you're just doing yourself a detriment to think and for people to kind of say yeah but i've got kids i've got work i've got family guys i get up at five in the morning i do all of my clients one-on-one before one o'clock i then have it scheduled in my diary that i train between one and three I then pick up my two kids from school, make sure that they eat, make sure that they go to their prospective clubs, make sure that I have um, all of my clients' online stuff all checked in, boxed off and everything else whilst they're at their clubs so I don't jeopardize time with them. And then by that time when they finished, my husband's back home from work, we then have some food together, kids go to bed, and I get an hour downtime with my blue light blockers on with my husband. It is very, very, very easy to schedule your day, but you have got to be good at your scheduling. Awesome, and yeah. don't just say, I don't have time to train. Put it in your fucking diary. Sorry, yeah. I got really angry about that point. Put well, it in your diary. Block yeah. out those hours that you want to train. Block out the hours that you want to go away with your family. Block out the way, you know, schedule your deload week when you're mm. going to have a holiday with the kids in the half term. Yeah. So everything fits into place. My entire year for next year is mapped out, give or take a few weeks, because yeah. I know when the kids' holidays are, I know when my anniversary is, I know when everything else is. So I've got my blocks all scheduled out of when I need to schedule things in. But breaking that down again to days, to hours, you've got 24 hours in a day, right? Just put in your sleep first. You're asleep for between six and eight of them if you can get a good night's sleep. You're then at work between this hour and that hour. What about the other days or all the other hours in the day? Yeah. Are you just going to sit down and watch TV with them? Guess what? You've probably got another eight hours of the day that you can fit 60 minutes in the gym if you want to do it. You know? And it's just break your day down like that. And if you do that, you will be consistent. You really, really will. People might think that we're boring, but seriously, if you have a look at our Insta stories, um, I mean, AJ, you're really focused on the worlds now, which is obviously that is your Insta story. And that is not boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it screams consistency and it screams professionalism mm-hmm. in the bodybuilding world. You look at my Instagram stories, guys. I've got, okay, fine. I've got my consistent breakfast going on. But I'm having a giggle with the kids, I'm walking the dog, I'm going out to trampoline parks. My life is not boring, it's not stagnant, it's not bodybuilding, but I am consistent in bodybuilding. Yes. And that's what makes you good in the off-season as well as on stage. Yeah, yeah. You can but anyway, have- listen, I am very, very conscious of the time. AJ needs to get on his morning walk and do his morning guys yeah. on the Instagram <laughs> stories. So um, we best get on. AJ, do you want to close off with anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, like, that point is amazing. Like, you can still have balance in the off-season, but mm. balance with consistency is what we're talking about. You know, Absolutely. like, for example, I, I said, you know, even though I'm prepping at the moment and I'm still fucking ragged tired half the time, I said to Jack um, the other day, I was like, do you fancy going to Tully's Farm? Tully's Farm over here is like um, it's like a Halloween park. It's fucking sick. It's so <laughs> it's like it's legit scary, Vicky. If you were here, I'd take you. Um, and, oh, I need and, to come down then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's legit scary. Like there's some mazes that scare the living fuck out of you. And <laughs> um, and they they have it on and they have it on in the evening. And obviously the evening I'm already screwed up. But I said to Jack, I was like, do you want to go? Like, and he was like yeah, no, that sounds fun. So I think we're going to get a group of us together and go. And I'll be like two and a half weeks, three weeks out of a world final, but I'll still go because, like, I I, I, I genuinely want to, again, show people that you can still do stuff outside of just your, you know, your gym, your your meals, etc. There's no reason why you can't stay super regimented with your meals and your training and still do stuff, you know? going Going out to that, fucking farm will take me like two hours i'm not going to miss a meal i'm not going to miss a training session and if anything i'm going to expend more calories by being scared the living daylights out of um and i'm also going to gain respect for my following 
by just sort of... Hey guys, so thank you very much for listening to the Natty Scene and this episode of the Eminem Update. Sorry that the ending again got cut off a little bit, but hopefully you, the audio quality throughout the episode was good enough for you to hear it and listen in. Thanks again, and make sure that you're following v me and Vicky on all of our other socials as usual. Make sure that if you've listened to the episode and enjoyed it, screenshot your mobile device, whack it on your Instagram story and share away, tag us in it, uh, and let us know what you thought. And of course, we'll see you back for next week's episode of the M&M &M Update. Cheers, guys.